1954 Peterbilt needle nose, which is not on there obviously right now, but they've been sitting here, the, one, the yellow one, they've both been sitting, the gray one's been sitting, the guy wanted to keep it, but uh, he ended up giving this yellow one away, somebody that could make a good project out of it, so as you can see it needs a little bit of work. I'm going to get this, hopefully my crane truck will lift this front end off the ground so we can change this tire first of all and get it moving around. Good deal. Get that changed. Okay, this is, uh, most modern trucks now have 10 hole wheels, but they call them hub pilot. These were old school bud wheels. The L on the left side of the truck means that the nuts are, the studs are left-handed thread, so you have to tighten them to loosen them. The, uh, let's go back here. The rear wheels, if they had dual wheels, you have this type of square stud here, and then this actual wheel would be turned around the other way, and this wheel would go on that stud and be bolted down, and then another wheel would go on, and the style nut that you saw on the front wheel would go on this end here. Lefty Lucy, righty Lucy. We just threw one on an old butt wheel to get it back to the shop so we can start work on it. So get her back down the ground. Go to the next step. Alright, we got the wheel back on this thing and it's apparently already had the brakes backed off so we don't have to worry about that when we move it. Our engine is a NH230 Cummins. Um, if you can see the tag there very well or not, but it's a pretty old Cummins. Uh, it has a compression release on it. The bracket's broke right now, but you would in the cab there was a this cable would go up into the cab you pull a lever out release the compression get the engine cranking over put the compression back to it fire up usually and this is actually a naturally aspirated engine there's no turbo on it and uh the guy i guess was going to restore this got started tearing it apart never lost interest or he I don't know if the one behind us, whether he picked it up afterwards, being a longer frame and a tandem is probably a little bit more desirable. But um, he has supposedly all the parts that he took off of this and everything for it in the garage. He was going on vacation, said we'd get the truck out of here. When he gets back, he'll get us all the parts. But it's uh, really, I mean, a pretty good shape truck for 1954. It's uh, the cab's mostly aluminum, and the frame is aluminum. I don't know if this would have been a West Coast truck. A lot of the West Coast trucks did have aluminum frames back in the day, just lack of corrosion. Everything was a lot lighter. Um, didn't rot out. We'll have to get into this a little bit more. Door latch works real nice. These old Pete's would have had wooden floors in them. That's well, why you see a lot of guys that restore these old ones have really decked out hardwood floors put in them. Uh, more than likely what we'll probably try to do with this at some point. It's going to be a... We haven't even got this back to our shop yet. We've got two-stick uh, transmission that everybody had back in. One, I don't know what this is, a four-speed main transmission and a three-speed brownie box, what they used to call them on the back side and you would run through all 
it, it takes a little bit of practice to figure out what gear you need to be in what in what box but that's what this has and I don't know what all the guy has taken off of this you can see there's a lot been a lot of stuff these are probably there probably was a deck plate or something on here that our airlines were attached to at one time and all the other ones looking pretty sad shape too I'm guessing probably what we'll do when we get through this we'll just start ripping ripping all this stuff out the bare frame and go run start running new stuff Yeah. If it falls off, we got a couple of cranes. 